The story begins as we see a masked man fights several monsters, but he says it's not enough. He demonstrates exceptional strength, but is unsatisfied and wants more. We cut to a man in a carriage running away from goblins, but luckily for him, a group of warriors appears and is able to deal with the goblins. After their victory, they return to the town, passing by a hungry fate who is standing guard at the castle. He notices them, but is disappointed. He can never be like them because he is constantly hungry due to his useless skill gluttony. The crowd is amazed as a group of holy knights pass through the town. They are the trio of the Valoric siblings, but we see they are terrible people. One of them kicks away a peasant in their way as they make their way towards the castle. At the gate, the eldest, Raphael, gives fate his pay by throwing it on the ground. As he tries to pick it up, Hanno steps on his hand. However, his stomach growls at that moment and Raphael calls him disgusting. The siblings get mad at the growling, thinking it makes it seem like they don't pay him enough. They start beating him up, but he is saved by another holy knight named Rock who reminds the siblings of their duty as holy knights to be kind to the citizens they have sworn to protect. The siblings decide to leave and Roxy helps fade up. She consoles him by telling him that guarding the gate is honorable and they are both equal in their job. Roxy takes over guarding the gate and asks him to tell her if something like this happens again. But Fate says that he is used to it and he decides to leave. We learn that Fate wants to protect Roxy by keeping a distance and doesn't want to get her involved, fearing that Raphael will hurt her too. Fate is encouraged by the bar bartender to stand up for himself, or he could end up dead like the last guy. On his way home, Fate curses his gluttony skill for still being hungry even though he had a meal. He wishes he could have been born with a more useful skill and despairs, that he can't do anything else because he can't change how things are. Fate notices thieves jumping over the castle wall, so he hurries over to Roxy to tell her the situation, and she leaves him to take over her position as she runs off to find the thieves. As he waits for Roxy to finish beating up the thieves, one of them runs toward him. His instincts tell him to run, but the thought of Roxy trusting him with her position helps him muster the courage to stay. He prepares himself to fight and notices that the thief is already injured. He gathers his courage and jumps toward the man, piercing him through his chest. Suddenly, he hears a voice telling him that his gluttony skill has been activated and his stats have been increased. Fate is confused, and the voice further tells him that the skills identify and telepathy have been added for him. At the same time, Roxy returns from her fight and is concerned for him. However, Fate notices something Something strange because he heard words coming from her, but her mouth didn't move. He reassures her and tells her that she can take credit for his kill because it would cause problems for him if Raphael found out. In return, Roxy offers him a job to work for her family. Fate considers his options and eventually agrees to work for her family. Later that night, Fate notices that all his stats are in the triple digits, and he then realizes that he must have been using telepathy on Roxy earlier. He is still confused about what is going on, but is now confident he can defeat monsters with his improved stats. The following day, Fate goes out to look for a sword. When the merchant finds out he is poor, he tells him he can only afford the trash swords in the barrel. Fate looks through the swords using his new identify skill and learns that all the swords are useless except one. When Fate examines that sword, he is shocked when it suddenly speaks to him, introducing itself as Greed and telling Fate to buy him. Upon learning that Greed is knowledgeable about gluttony, Fate decides to buy it. We see the Valoric siblings talk about Roxy, trying to hire fate without informing them first. Raphael feels there is no need to complicate things between them and the Hearts family because they are both part of the five great families that support the kingdom. While noting fate as being worthless, Raphael heads toward the military district and his sister wonders what he's going to study. He tells her his plan to learn how to become immortal. Later on, we see fate walking with greed in his hand and it warns him of something fast approaching. A goblin appears out of nowhere, but fate is easily able to kill it, which activates his glut skill, increasing his stats once again. The skill strength boost is given to him. Swarms of goblins appear out of nowhere, but fate remains calm as he cuts them down. After each kill, his gluttony skill is activated, and he ends up killing hundreds. When it's all over, he checks his stats and is surprised by how much they have increased. Greed points out that fate must be full, and fate notices that his stomach hasn't growled at all that day, which has never happened before. Greed says that normally each person has only the skill they are born with, but thanks to gluttony, fate can steal the stats and skills of others. However, it's not something that other people can know about. Fate realizes that he must always fight alone, but Greed reassures him, saying he is not alone 
since he is with him. Fate takes all the goblineers to get paid and wanders about all the things he can buy as they enter the town, but is reminded by greed of his maintenance coming first. At that moment, they suddenly run into a man and a young girl who we see asking for help. Fate uses his skill, identified to assess the man's threat level, and finds that he has the skill to hide stats. Fate is suspicious, but says that they can't just ignore a girl's cry for help. They follow the man, and he tells the girl, that she'll be sold as a slave to the Holy Knights. Greed warns Fate that the man is tough, so it's his last chance to run away. However, Fate says he has finally gained the power he always wanted, and he will use it to protect the weak. Meanwhile, we see an old nun speaking to a bunch of orphans, telling them about Holy Laplace, the creator of the world, who gifted people special powers known as skills when she left the world. She reveals that there was a time when there were no skills and everything was peaceful. A nun barges into the room, saying she can't find a missing orphan. She leaves to continue her search, and the other nun wonders where the girl named Sahara has gone. As fate and greed encounter the man and the kidnapped girl, Sahara, Fate takes this chance to save her. He rescues the girl, but the kidnapper appears behind him. The kidnapper calls him foolish, telling him that he has no chance of beating him. He wants to take the girl to safety, but is unsure of what to do. Greed advises him to step back, take advantage of the kidnapper's overconfidence, and wait for the right moment to attack. Fate tries to flee with Zahara, but they eventually reach a dead end. Fate launches a surprise attack, and as the man prepares to use his skill, Greed instructs Fate to strike him head on. Fate charges at the man, delivering a decisive blow. Fate orders the man to tell him everything, but he refuses. Fate proceeds to torture him, and he eventually reveals that he was ordered by Hato to kidnap Sahara. Fate takes Sahara to get some food after hearing her stomach growl, and he takes her back to the orphanage. He is surprised to hear Sahara's gratitude because it's the first time someone thanked him. Fate approaches Sahara and gives her advice, the same words his father had told him in the past, but he had been unable to understand until now. No matter how hard things get, if you can laugh them off, one day you will find happiness. On the way back, Greed congratulates Fate on learning his first technical skill, the one-handed sword technique, a secret technique that allows him to attack twice in a single strike. Fate thinks he got lucky against the kidnapper and is determined to get stronger so that he can win without relying on luck. The following day, Fate arrives at the Hart family estate, where Roxy greets him at the gate. He is taken aback by her appearance. She takes him to the grave of her recently deceased father, revealing that he was killed five days ago in Gallia, a continent dominated by monsters. Roxy explains that it's the duty of Holy Knights to keep monsters in check on the continent of Gallia. This duty fell to the Hart family this year, but unfortunately, a divine dragon emerged from a 1,000-year solitude, wiping out the group led by her father. Roxy reveals that she is currently the head of the house and looks forward to working with Fate. As they are about to shake hands, Fate remembers that his telepathy will be activated, so he points towards a random person. Chief Mate Haru, who reminds him to conduct himself as a servant of the Hart family. A week goes by as Fate continues to work in the Hart Estates. He talks with the other servants when his stomach starts to growl, shocking the others because they just ate lunch. Fate is called to meet Roxy, but his stomach continues to growl, and even Fate is confused by what is happening. Roxy tries to have a conversation with him, but he keeps thinking about why he's so hungry. Roxy snaps him out of it, and the two relate over their dead fathers, both killed by monsters. She considers him a member of the family, causing him to be become flustered, but he suddenly loses consciousness. He wakes up in his room and sees a note from Roxy telling him to take the day off. Fate questions Greed about his hunger, and Greed reveals that it is due to gluttony. The more souls Fate consumes, the stronger he'll become, but at the same time, his desire will also grow stronger, and he is destined to seek out souls to consume until the day he dies. Greed tells Fate that when his hunger is at its limit, it will show in his eyes and fate realizes that his eyes are red. That's where this video ends. If you want more parts, let me know in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Peace out.